Hi, I'm Connie Whitman, your host, and you're listening to Enlightenment of Change on webtalkradio.net. As always, I appreciate that you tune in weekly. So my motivational quote today is by Edgar Cayce, and he says, Dreams are today's answers to tomorrow's questions. Now, have you ever had a dream that seems so real that you almost wake yourself up? You're either feeling super happy or maybe scared beyond belief. Whether it's a nightmare or a reunion with a lost love, dreams can reflect what's actually going on in our subconscious mind. Now, what if you could use that intel or information from those dreams And are these messages important that might be able to help you in your waking life? They are. So today my guest is is an expert on this topic. It's Dr. David Lowe. And we're going to discuss dreams and how they may help you decipher those messages in your waking life. Now Dave is a former religious professor and counselor um, who today does dream work, substance abuse counseling, meditation instruction, and speaks on topics in popular spirituality and religious um, uh, topics. After his uh, primary intuition, I'm sorry, initiation 35 years ago, he began receiving dream guidance, which has influenced major decisions in his own personal life. Now, an epiphany in 2014 led him to write his first book, Universal Spiritual Philosophy and Practice, an informal textbook for discover for discerning seekers. Now, his, his greatest passion is DreamWorks and helping people tune into that more profound event dimension of their own spirituality and get those answers. So please help me welcome David back to the show. So thanks for being on again, David. It's great to be with you, Connie, always. You especially, of all these radio hosts I've dealt with, you are you are dynamite. Oh, you, you're one of my faves, too. <laughs> um, so David's been on before. I highly recommend go back and search the archives for any shows that he's been on. I don't, David, how many is this? Four or five? I think we've done five or six together. Yeah, we, over the over the past uh, few years. Yeah. So go back because his insight on really religious, right? All of we're all the same in in, in concepts, but also on the DreamWorks end, which is kind of um, you're putting a little more focus now on your business on the DreamWorks end, and really helping people dig in and understand like what the heck's going on in their waking life. So why, let's start first with some foundational questions. Why do you think dreams are so important? And do they have a, a, an important biological function for us as humans? Yeah, dreams are important at all levels of our being, biological, you know, cognitive, psychological, and spiritual. Um, they are integral to the sleep process. You can't prevent someone from dreaming without permanently de- depriving them of sleep basically uh we know you know how and in and an internal combustion engine needs to produce exhaust that's a bad example that that we all don't like these days but dreams seem to be most theorists think a byproduct in in one way or another of both neurological functions and uh, involving brain maintenance at night as well as cognitive functions like short-term memory to long-term memory processing of spatiotemporal hearing information at night while we're awake dreams seem to be involved in all that and to some degree a byproduct of those things at the cognitive and biological levels higher than that of course is 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 what is what we're concerned with in daily life yeah so of course they do have spiritual functions and psychological functions as well but bio, they are crucial to our sleep so let me ask you a question. A lot of people say, well, I don't I either if I dream, I don't remember them or I don't even think I dream. Are are they still dreaming? Yeah, everyone dreams <clears throat> are that's been known for decades. If you wake somebody up who says that they never dream, you wake them up during REM sleep, they will remember dreaming. Um, so we all dream nobody really knows why we don't all remember more dreams. That's a big topic of 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 research in the field. But yeah, it's that uh, everyone dreams every night, and we can all learn to remember them better than we do, um, with 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 desire, prayer, journaling, and all that sort of thing. We can remember more than we do, with enough longing for who we are and a good direction for what we want to do. We can tune into them better. Do you find when you talk to you know your clients that you work with, do you find that we often remember more of our uh, nightmares than we remember? 
you know, the happier dreams or the more uh, fulfilling dreams? Or is it a combination? Oh, definitely. I mean, nightmares and recurring dreams are the most important type of dream because they're the ones that are trying to tell us things that we've been doing our best to ignore. You know, most of us think that a dream is unpleasant only to get our attention. So there's no such thing as a bad dream. But, you know, a recurring, we shouldn't have a, we, we shouldn't be having the same dream that often. That means that we're not, there, there's something in, in, in our life that we're not addressing. Uh, an unpleasant dream is always trying to tell us something that we're, that we don't like to look at. Um, so, yeah, those are the most important kinds of dreams. There are certainly dreams which I think most people tend to remember the most because they're, they're the dreams that bother us the most. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, there are, it, it's interesting about that. People either want to talk about, you know, difficult dreams or very spiritual dreams. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole range, but, but and nightmares and recurring dreams are certainly the most important types to look at. Which, which is interesting, Dave, because um, think about it. And, and we hear this all the time. So our, our dreams are kind of tapping from our subconscious, our subconscious to our conscious mind saying, look at this, look at this be aware. And we, we kind of ignore that or suppress it or try not to remember our dreams. And then on the flip side, in our waking life, we, we get sick. Um, we end up with chronic colds, um, infections, cancer, other, other more debilitating diseases. So the more we suppress, your body is going to let it out one way or the other. Um, so you almost can't escape your sub whatever's going on in your subconscious, right? That, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, absolutely. One one thing to be aware of here is that, you know, there are some theorists who don't think that dreams can access information before we were born. They don't see a supernatural dimension involved in dreaming. Now, f from our subconscious, a dream, dream, dreams can do all that stuff. They can effectively predict stuff in the future based on subtle things that we've been picking up in this life right now. So they don't do anything, quote unquote, supernatural. What they're, what they're doing in, 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 for these theorists is just they're taking subconscious information that we've been picking up through through life anyway and projecting that into the future. Um, most of us think that dreams do have a deeper dimension into the universal unconscious sub uh, um, and the archetypes of the collective unconscious involving information from previous lifetimes. And involving information, involving, you know, um, um, enlightenment eventually. So dreams lead us toward that. But there are some folks who think that they don't go any deeper than, than, than birth, than since birth. But most of us think that, that dreams transcend that boundary and go deeper than that. Do you believe it transcends that boundary and co go back to those previous, where we have dreams that are memories from a previous life for something that oh, maybe we have to learn? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, I do too. Um, I have a friend who, who like you, it does a lot of dream work, and he has he, he say he shares one experience where he has a dream, and there's a it's a poster on a wall. Poster meant absolutely nothing to him in his dream, but he's a, he does like you. He journals his dream, so he wrote it down, and like a year later, he ended up traveling to I don't know. Um, like Iceland or some, some place weird, Finland, something like that. Right. And he said that wherever he was, wherever he was staying on the wall was this exact picture. And he thought to himself, wait a minute, I, why is it so familiar? And then he went back and realized that it was a dream he had one year prior. So I, I think, yeah, it could see into the future because I, I don't know. Do you believe that dreaming we think linear. Our brains, right, are very linear. There's a past, there's a present, and then there's a future. Do you think mm -hmm. dreams kind of go beyond that and there is no timeline for a dream? You know what I mean? That's correct. Now, someone has that kind of synchronistic experience in order to get them to contemplate what's going on with reality. You know, what is this thing about I have this faculty? that can cross over time and space because our thinking, feeling and sensing is all in the fifth, sixth higher dimensions. OK, so part of our part of who we are pervades everywhere. The universe is an expansion of our own being. That's what the mystics tell us. So we and on one super deep level, we feel everything, even the furthest galaxies. You know, so our thinking, feeling, contemplate all that happens in the fifth dimension and up. 
across time and space. Cool. At the at, <clears throat> but at the first levels of unusual experience, when somebody is just coming out of three dimensions, say, hey, wait, there's more to life than just three dimensions. You have to be presented with these these, these things over and over again before you start thinking, hey, what's going on? You know, and then you start thinking more deeply, and those kind of and those kinds of synchronistic experiences become taken for granted. You know, so yeah, that that that's part of the whole process of realizing, hey, there is something more out there, and life will do that until you start taking it seriously. And yeah, going- yeah, it's it's fascinating. It really is fascinating because we're always being tapped on the shoulder. Watch this. Do that. Here's an opportunity. <clears throat> Most of us, though, we're zombies, right? We walk through life thinking, oh, I don't have any opportunities. Meanwhile, there's three in front of you, but you have such blinders on or preconceived notions that you never see what's, what's right in front of you or what's going on. So I, I think that dreams sometimes try to like wake up and, and see what's right in front of you. Now you talk about, we've been talking about these dreams and spirituality. How, how do dreams work for us on that spiritual level? Or did you already kind of answer that? Well, think of Think of ourselves as being surrounded by auras. The typical notion of an aura is maybe a circle with a, with a ten foot radius out from the out from the physical dimension of who we are. Think of your aura as going all the way out to 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 the edge of the universe, and you can feel that. Dreams are sort of an advanced radar, you could say. I mean, in accordance with our karma, because we all have to go through stuff. Uh, we all people have different karmas, and some of us, no matter how well we pay attention to our dreams. Are going to experience difficult, maybe maybe life terrible, life tearing things. You know, some of us are just going. That's going to happen, no matter how good we are at dream work. But for the most part, dreams con- are continually presenting an opportunity to make better choices than most of us typically make, and that involves that dialogue with God, that dialogue with God's self, back and forth, and that that you know, it's understand that dreams are always trying to give us a choice. And they, they they are sensing things. You can think of them as actually sensing things way beneath the radar. You know, they're sensing things and presenting them to us in dreams. So our psychic faculties are presenting those things to us in dreams. And they 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 they, they tell you in they usually don't tell you directly. Literal dreams are rare. They're often literal elements of people's dreams who are on spiritual paths. But but for the most part, for most people, dreams are entirely symbolic. Okay, so they 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 let you know indirectly. They infer or imply things you should do, and that takes work to discover that. Yeah, and and you and I, guys, if you're interested in that, what Dave just said that they're they're symbolic in nature. We did a whole show, I think, David, um, a few months ago, but I think we covered like ten or fifteen traditional, you know, dreaming about a tiger, but we, we talked about, uh, falling was another one, I believe, but we talked about what they infer, uh, because it's not literal that you're falling right out of, out of an airplane or something, um, to right. your death. So sure. go back and listen to that. I don't want to cover that here because we already did that. I don't want to, I, I, I want us to dig a little deeper today. Yeah, um, Paulman's psychology dreams are just results of tensions in everyday life, falling, you know, um, losing your teeth, being un, being undressed in public, driving out of control, being pregnant, all that sort of things are no brainers for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. So you want, you want you, we, we, we want to dig a bit deeper here. If possible. Yeah, that, I, I definitely do. Now, are there any guidances uh, or guidelines that, um, that you use or, or you recommend, um, when should we, or what are, what are things that we should especially pay attention to what do you work with with your clients for instance that you think we need to tap into this i would say well again unpleasant and recurring dreams definitely um in terms of um, what does your mind dwell on we can go into the whole thing about how i how i work with clients but basically demographic information family information personal hang-ups on the part of the dreamer that's the big thing uh, personal hangups in relation to family, his own d- desires or goals, career, all that sort of thing. You know, God self wants us to have a nice time in life and, and, and to continually get happier and more fulfilled to make those choices. We need to understand, you know, um, so personal issues as they relate to our family goals and so forth. Uh, we don't need to. Those things are continually being 
talked about in our dreams. Our dreams want to inform us about those things all the time. And they'll take the same basic underlying story and dress it up again and again in all these different guises until we finally get it. You know, um, they try to illustrate underlying patterns of behavior and thinking that we are subject to. We are conditioned by without us realizing it, which confine us. OK. And with enough look, looking at dreams, you do understand they're, they're, they're a real important thing to understand about dreams. They offer us two things, an intellectual message and an opportunity for deeper emotional catharsis, which requires more therapeutic work, which I can do. But the intellectual message is 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 easier to get at most of the time. Um, the catharsis is more difficult, but it can be done and frequently is. They usually happen at the same time to some extent. It's yeah. interesting. It's we're onions, right? As we peel back these different layers, like, oh, there's more. And then you peel it, oh, there's more. And we could go deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and you said something so interesting that our dreams are however that divine intervention, right? That download of of information comes for us to see opportunities, progress in life, meet our goals, whatever it might be that we're working on in this lifetime. It's interesting because all of that information really is coming from within us, right? From our subconscious. We, we have the answers. We just don't know how to tap into it. So dreams, what we're talking about today is one way um, to tap into it. So now another question for you, Dave, and you and I've talked about this, but I want, I want everybody to hear it again from you. Um, trying to write down dreams especially because you're in the middle of the night, you wake up from a dream, you remember it, you want to want to jot it down and you want to put as many details, what you're feeling, any of the details you, you, you know, you remember from the actual dream. It takes time. And you're thinking, I have to get up at 5 a.m. I want to go back to bed. Is there, is there something or some basic quick down and dirty things that you recommend people do and why should yeah, they do just, it? Just bullet points. The bullet points of four or five major bullet points of three or four words each. Major issues, major sim, uh, major images, major things that were said, overall feelings and overall feelings and, and um and, and um atmosphere. That will often bring back the whole thing later on. Okay, but you know the three things. I mean, your journal, meditation, and good sleep. Those are the three basic things you need to have that dialogue going with God self all the time. And yeah, so, so yeah, you can, you can um, <clears throat> really tune into that deeper level of your being, but it, it, it takes discipline. It's, there's no question. It takes take, take half hour to, to write down a long dream, but sometimes you have to do that to really delve into what it's trying to tell you. You have to devote regular time to it. But in the morning when you're getting up, I mean, do like the half hour Two or three times a week if you have to only. But if you get a dream, just jot down three or four bullet points only and and um, come back to it later. But above all, remember, yeah, it can help to work with folks like me. Goodness only knows. But our a deeper part of our personality does understand the dream um, on some level. So just by contemplating it, reading, going over it and just pondering it, you'll get it. You will get it on some level and you, you will maybe progress more slowly than you would if you work with someone like me, but you will, you will, you will get it. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you find that people, and again, we'll just talk about the people you work with because that's kind of your database as well as all the research. I know you do a ton of research. Do you find people deny it? Like it's obvious in their dream and they're like, yeah, yeah, no, that's not it. Do you find that we, until we're ready, do we go, no, 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 no. Do you find that a lot or, or by the time people especially work with you or they really want to do the dream work and we call it dream work for a reason, um, do you find they're more open to the suggestions of the dream? You know what I mean? Yeah. When someone's really ready to work on this, they have an intuitive realization that, that the dream is not literal, that they're going to have to figure it out, that God doesn't spoon feed us anything. We have to do our part to fathom what this thing's trying to tell us and to feel it, what it what, what, what to feel and go through the issues that it wants us to work through. So, yeah, I mean, my, my, people at kind of a superficial, ah, I know what that's about. There's no big deal. Or th they'll often say, no, that's not it. I know that's not the problem. It usually often is the very thing, <laughs> the very thing that, that they say it's not. I bet. Uh, that's quite often the case. 
Yeah. 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 Um, it, it, it's funny because we want to go into denial first because really and denial is so much easier. And you cracked me up when you said, you know, God's not going to come down and go, here's the silver spoon. Let me spoon feed you exactly what I mean, we have to figure it out. That's why we're in yeah. human form. That's why we're going yeah. through this life, right? To exactly. experience the human form. It's life really doesn't work like that. We have to work at it. <laughs> you do. And that's why I said dream work. It's work. To, to you know really dive in and understand what our dreams mean it's it's um you know it sounds mystical dream work i love that name but it's work that's at the essence that's what we have to do so it just makes me kind of giggle now in your book i i and i've read this elsewhere as well that dreams um their dream symbolism constitute and you've talked a little bit about this that universal language can you right. just say a little bit more for, to provide a little bit of clarity with that the best way to understand that is a very, very profound topic, but it's easy to understand on one level. We're all born into this world naked with no culture and no language. We adopt the language and culture as we grow up. But at the same time, we all perceive the same basic world. We all get the same sense data. Everybody knows what clouds are, what weather is, what cooking is, what sex is, and so forth. There is a basic world out there that we all perceive the same thing of. That's the material that dream symbolism works with automatically to formulate for the dreamer the best way to present to him or her the message in according to their own background. Yeah, so so a, a really, really powerful, super basic universal symbol like water. Yeah, you know, water can be emotions, feelings, drowning in feelings, the profound depth of human experience, great wisdom, intuitive, deep, super deep wisdom. Everything comes out of water, the feminine element, growth out of water and so forth. All that is involved in the symbol of water. But exactly how it applies to the individual is going to vary from dreamer to dreamer to dreamer. And it's based, on, based on their background. But, based on their background. Yeah, and, and it's almost like, um, you know, Chinese speak different than we do right in America with English. So I guess the dreams are almost translated through your language, so to speak, because you said it depends on how you were raised, um, the culture that you're raised within. So the dream is going to be representative from that perspective, I, I would think, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Automatically. Okay. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Automatically. That, of course. Well, that a good thing, a way to understand this is that, you know, for example, if you dream of a particular friend of yours, Say you dream of, of a Richard Pollock instead of John Smith, right? Or you dream of a Ellen Klemchuk instead of Fran Lowe, okay? There's a reason why you dream of that person versus the other person. We all have specific, specific associations with specific people. Um, aside from just the basic knowing who they are, what specifically emotionally in terms of background, feeling, do you associate with that person versus somebody else? versus one of your other friends, that's going to have to do with why the dream is using that individual in, in your dream to, to communicate something. Okay. That's a very specific symbol. Okay. But a very super general symbol like water or earth or air has a tremendous variety of profound meanings for people. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Very, very profound topic. And, and you said it before, I, I just want to, kind of reiterate it that when you do or if you do your dream journal bullets great idea dave so you don't have to write all the detail because we do want to get back to sleep because you have to get up to go to work the next day you certainly right. want to be refreshed we don't want to have um interrupted sleep pattern itself so um the the uh when you journal another key component is to write the feeling that you felt from that dream because later on when you reflect it might really dig in and help you figure out what's going on or what you should be looking at or reevaluating am i understanding that correctly the emotion is kind of important too that's probably the probably the single most important thing to understand how you were feeling when you woke up and, and and how you felt in the dream in relation to the content that that that's of primary importance in understanding it. You know you're on the right track with the meaning of dream when you feel it in your body, okay? Because the dream offers a deeper opportunity to process profound emotional issues. And um, the, object can, the objects in dreams are, you could think of them as solidified feelings, literally. At that level, our thoughts and feelings haven't really separated from each other yet. So one will, well, one will change and the other will change. But <clears throat> um, at the very you feel in your body what the dream is about 
And when you get, you, you know that you're on the right track when you have a feeling experience in your body, sort of an aha moment sort of experience in discussing the dream with somebody. You're on the right track with that. Yeah, and and I think that during the day, it's easy when we're awake. It's so much easier to suppress feelings because we think I, I can't worry about that now. We focus on work. I can't worry about that now. I have to cook dinner, whatever it might be. So during our waking life, it's easier to push emotions away, which is dangerous, and that's why they're forcing themselves up through the dreams. I would think, right? So you you can't you can't keep pushing something down that really needs to come out. If I'm understanding exactly. this correctly. Yeah. Exactly. 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 And what's it's amazing is that, you know, when you when you really start getting it in, in, in talking about our dream, you begin getting more. You begin focusing on what it's really about. You do. The feelings do come up. You will begin to experience feelings. And um, it's amazing how you can't quantify what those feelings are. But the symbols involved in the dream are important in communicating in 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 in, in, in activating the you know transformative uh, yeah. process within you by which those feelings resolve themselves. It's remarkable. This whole topic to me, you know, I you know I love this topic. <laughs> That's why we keep coming back, and every time we come back, it's like another layer of the onion. I feel like it's like, oh yeah, I didn't even think of that. So dreams are just so profound and so amazing, um, and at the core, honest. I think it's it's really the honesty that we need to address that we just are afraid of or we don't want to. Or we're not ready to. I think that's another thing, right, Dave, that you probably find people have to really be ready to want to decipher the dreams and dig in and figure out what, what their next move is, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 <clears throat> What's interesting is that all the theories about dreaming are right at their own level, but the psychological and spiritual aspects of it are what we are most interested in. And yeah, I mean, we all have dream sight, I like to call it. We all have them. Some people have special uh, to get special spiritual gifts like clairvoyance or whatever, but we all have what I call dream sight. That faculty which allows us to make better choices if we want to look and make those better choices. And yet if we don't remember our dreams, you can start by taking a greater interest in them. Get a book about dreams, read it, get a journal, put it next to your bed. Doing those things with your body puts God on notice. I'm interested. And you'll, you'll, you will start getting, and be sure that you're getting good sleep by all means, you got to get good sleep um, and meditate. Uh, every, all, get, get into your spiritual life. That's a big overall thing. And um, they're there to help us. They're part of who we are. We're all meant to go back to the source. And dreams are, I mean, for everybody, for folks like me, for whom dreams are more important than average. But for everybody who gets in, everybody who gets into a deeper spiritual search to some extent, those of us who get into a deeper spiritual search, everyone to some extent begins to understand their dreams and to and to appreciate what they're telling them. And it's interesting, you know, you you've gotten me into the habit, right, of journaling and and addressing my dreams from a feeling perspective and all of those things. And recently, it was just kind of funny. This was a very tangible example for myself. I don't, I can't remember the dream itself. But I remember waking up with this feeling of what I needed to do. I have a partner. I have a second business with a partner. And there was something with, we have a, the communication style assessment, the free assessment online. And it was something related to that. And I woke up and I remember thinking, oh, my God, we need to do these three things that we hadn't done. We hadn't thought about it. And I immediately, again, I don't know what I was dreaming, but it mm -hmm. woke me up out of the dream in the morning. And I immediately wrote it because I thought I'm going to forget the three things. And I wrote them down. And then as soon as I got into my office, I emailed my partner and I said, we have to do these three things. We could talk about it later. But I was excited because I thought, this is so important. How did we miss this? And I get the response, oh, my God, how did we miss this? And I thought it was from whatever I was dreaming. Yeah. It triggered into this is what you need to do in your waking life. So the, these muscle memory things, I think, it almost starts to translate it for you. Dave, I don't know what the dream was. I just know I woke up. The connection was there. I wrote what I needed to do, and it was spot on. Yeah, well, it's amazing. You, you, you get the dream, and in your case, there is enough of, of an intuitive psychic faculty to, to immediately translate it into what it's trying to tell you. That's really cool. But, but uh, uh, the, the process of translating that dream material into the insights, which you later wrote down, is something which in your case happened automatically, which is really amazing. That's cool. 
Wasn't that's that cool? cool. Hey, I have to be honest. It freaks me out a little bit. I'm like, how did that happen? And then you start, then you start questioning. How did that happen? Why did that happen? What did I do differently? And then, you know, then you go through, you go down the rabbit hole of why all of a sudden, and well, let me tell you, does that happen all the time? Uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. But that one time for some reason, it, it honestly, it might've been, it might've been in the top of my mind that I just wasn't addressing because I was busy with other things. So maybe the connection was pretty clear to me. And then I just yeah. had to remember what the three things were. So, you know, I mean, don't, people don't be that impressed. Yeah. That Most of the time, I mean, the, 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 the typical classic experience that we have all heard of in that regard is these great scientists who've come up with their inventions and insights as a result of a dream, yeah. which they, which they do explicitly remember. Yeah. You know, the guy at Pecule, who invented the benzene ring, such a very important industrial chemical. Yeah. Yeah. Elias Howe, the sewing machine. All It's amazing. But they, they can tell you the specific things yeah. that they saw in their dreams, which made them realize, aha, that's what I've been trying to understand yeah. for the past 10 years of my life. And there yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. That's right. The light bulb, right? We heard that. The light bulb, the dream. And then the light bulb knew exactly what to do with the elements or the filaments inside. It's really kind of cool. Um, and I think that inventors... Their, I think their brain is on a whole different level that they can take their little naps. And, and, and a lot of time you've, you've heard in the past that these inventors, these you know, very well-known inventors, um, they take those naps as part of their protocol in their life because they know during that nap, they're, they're, sense, they're saying, I need to figure this out, go take a nap, and the answer will come. So they're, they're priming themselves. It's, it's a muscle memory thing, Dave, right? So they're priming okay. themselves to do what you and I are talking about. We're just talking to the newbies that don't know how to do that at that, that very sophisticated level. There's levels, right? right? There's levels of, of practice, 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 and you get better and better and better. Like you did not come out when you started understanding and, and investigating DreamWorks to be able to do everything you can do. I mean, it's, it's a lifetime of practice and, and research and um, expectations, and, you know, playing with it to some extent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, well, the main thing is, is to have faith that there are, we do have this dream site, and if we, we will benefit if we start paying attention to them. That takes regular discipline work. But we don't need to worry about being an expert. If you want to really specialize in it, yeah, that, absolutely. But but if you want to just tune into what they're saying and, and make better choices in life, just ponder them. Ponder them. And you will start getting on the beam in a way that you weren't before. You will start receiving guidance, although you don't know what the heck that guidance is because there's yeah. very, very complex things with all these crazy symbols, these unbelievably stupid, crazy things happening that couldn't possibly happen in real life. They have meaning. They have meaning. And yeah. You can get on. Uh, you can begin to get into a synchronistic path through life that will lead you to greater happiness and unfolding, as a result of doing that. Yeah, and and you gave some just great tips. If if this hasn't been kind of in your path or in your habit, um, put a journal next to your bed and before you go to bed. I know you've said this before too in, in our previous shows. Before you go to bed, say to yourself, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to remember my dreams. I'm going to be able to journal my dreams and almost do that internal talk um, as you're falling asleep and you, you'll remember your dreams to write them. And the other thing you just said today, which you'd never said before, which was kind of cool. Um, if you're interested in this, start by buying a dream work or a dream book and just start reading about it. It, it tells the universe, God, source, whatever, whatever you're belief is yeah. that it's like hey i'm kind of tuning in here send me some signals send me yeah. some more things that i need to do um, yeah, you have to do things with your whole body yeah. you have to do things with your whole being yeah. and be seriously invested in understanding what these things are and be willing to um being willing to change i mean i, I guarantee you if we all have most of us have things about ourselves that we don't like to think about don't like to look at those are the very things, number one, two, three, four, that your dreams are going to be talking about, guaranteed. I mean, God knows what, I mean, the good Lord has his own schedule for, for what we're ready for at any one point That's in right. that journey, right? But so we won't, don't necessarily have to confront the most difficult things yet. God knows what that situation is. He'll, he'll, he'll have the right schedule for you. Absolutely. God himself will, will know when you're ready to be confronted with this, this issue, this issue, this issue. Yeah. I'm yeah, laughing so, when you said we have things we don't like about ourselves. Did you know I'm perfect? <laughs> right, right. I know well, you I'm knew that. <laughs> another thing to say is that working with other people is um, you, you can work with someone like me and get get a lot get a, 
a lot of benefit out of doing so. Working with others on a regular basis in a dream group is probably the single best thing you can do. Cool. It's important. You don't have to be an expert. Anyone can say, okay, let's get together and look at our dreams. I don't know the first thing about it. There are some basic leaderless dream group protocols, which I can tell people about. And um, yeah, it's just a matter of regular effort, tolerance with tolerance of each other, um, keeping on track with the protocol that you're using. Yeah. And you will start to have insights about each other's dreams that you couldn't possibly have had alone. Yeah, I love it. Now, just you, you're you definitely a practitioner in this realm that you can help people, and I know that you use Zoom. So, folks that are listening, because you know I have people all over the world um, tuning in. So, just because you're not in, and you're still in the the Philly area, Pennsylvania, right? Right. Yeah. Um, you don't have to live in Pennsylvania. Um, Dave can Zoom. Um, also, Dave, I'm going to give your website. If tell me if it's changed. Um, I have. First, let me give your email. Is that okay if I give your email? Sure. Sure. So it's david at worldspirituality.com. Has that changed? No, that's fine. That's okay. perfect. So uh, email. And the website is davidlowmsphd.com. And it's David and then L O W and then M S Mary Sally PhD.com. And I will post this, David, on my. Uh, web talk radio enlightenment of change platform so folks can literally because you know a lot of people commute with us so this way they can click and find you um but if they have questions they should email you i would think with questions yeah. that you know so, yeah and again you can let them know at that time what programs you have running if you have do you have gr dream groups going right now i have a couple of dream groups here in philly it's always it's interesting trying to get dream groups going online i'm starting to do that a little cool. bit um, I've been through courses online myself with the really senior, well-known dream workers in sure, the world. Sure. And I, I want to start doing that myself. I love it. I love it. Online. Yeah. It's more difficult, but it can be done. Yeah. And I just want to comment one more thing before we're, we're out of time, but I want to comment on one more thing. Remember David was a teacher or are you still teaching? I might go back to doing maybe one course per semester. Okay. So it's kind of as, just to keep your hands stuff. in it. Yeah. Religious studies courses. Yeah, and and but he teaches, so he's very clear, like he was today. Um, so if you're really looking at this, I highly recommend um, connecting with him, picking his brain, and seeing that you know if, if if it's a good match. Just because you really articulate and share, but you deep dive, but you don't overwhelm. Um, you're a good teacher, but I mean again, that's your background, so it's a skill that you've developed, you know, through your lifetime as well. So you know, check David out again. I'll post all of his information. Um, um, on the on the platform and guys my partner and I I mentioned it briefly just because it was appropriate in our conversation but we're uh, still offering the free communication style assessment just go to wisdomdecoded.com landing page CSA right there click it take it you get a little report um, telling you what your strengths are and what some of your blind spots are and it just gives you yet see another tool to help you on this navigation of change that's going on in our life and you know Dave said it you have to be willing to change Thus, why the show is called Enlightenment of Change. We're on this path, you know, figure out what that is. David is a tool, not, you know what I mean, David's <laughs> experience and DreamWorks and programs is a tool. My communication style assessment is a tool. Check them out. Um, David, thank you again uh, for being on and for your just wonderful insight. I always appreciate it. And I always learn something new. So I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Connie, take care. Thank you so much. Uh, always a pleasure. Be on the show. You got Bye it. Bye now. Okay. And I hope you guys will join me week, uh, weekly as we question, build, and discover that this thing of change, we've got it, we can handle it, and it's easier than you think.